Hey, what's up guys? It's Steel from Final Concept and today we are going to create a custom photo frame in Adobe Photoshop. I believe this is an interesting way of presenting your work to your client so that at least they have a fair idea of what the final product is going to look like. Anyway, let's get started. Welcome to Fino Concept. Click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Alright, so I'll go ahead and open up my application here. As always, I'm using Adobe Photoshop and I'll go ahead and create a new document. So let's go with a square as always. So 2000 by 2000 height. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you want, it's actually what you are going to use. Anyway, so um, let me just bring this somewhere around here. I want to have an A4 frame, so I'll go back to file and click on new and let's create an a4 sheet so if you go into a4 right here you can just select it up if you can't find it go just go to print and find a4 or a3 or a5 anything you want to use you can use that so i'll click on create so we have our a4 document here and what i'm going to do is fill this entire space up with a rectangle so i'm going to the shapes tool, find the rectangle tool, and just click and drag like so now um depending on what photoshop you are using uh you can just stretch all this out to reach the corners so in my case i'm just going to stretch it out like so sometimes you may have to hold down the shift key um if you're on a newer version of photoshop so something like this is cool and i want to have a duplicate of this um the color doesn't actually matter but we are going to be using black so i'll just double click on the thumbnail and change it to black or probably dark gray something like that and click on ok so let's duplicate ctrl j and double click again this time around we are going to set it to white then with our move tool still active i'll just click and drag whilst holding down the alt key to get something like this i think something like this is okay if you want you can also hold down um, the shift key and just stretch it out like so and just position them at the center so that it appears that we have all the corners about the same width and height so if we take a look here we have something like that and um, yeah i think this is okay now we actually want this white part to be transparent so um, if i click on this lock icon right here i can go ahead and turn the locked background into a layer and go ahead and delete it we don't actually want that so I hold down the control key and you notice the moment you hold it down and hover over the thumbnail it changes to this new Keza and I just click on it and it creates a selection around the white rectangle we just created. So I'll go back to the black rectangle and create a layer mask which is the third icon from the left. And this is what we are looking at now with the layer mask still selected we actually want the outer portion and not the inner so i'll just hold down the control key and press i this will invert our selection now we don't need this anymore it was just for creating that space if you don't want to go through that you can just grab the rectangular marquee tool and just create a selection like so i i think that would have <laughs> been a lot easier we could have done that but i completely forgot okay so we'll grab the move tool and we'll bring this over to our canvas working canvas right around here it appears it's a uh, big too big so I, I think i'll resize it to something like this let's have it at the center like so i think this is perfect now let's go ahead and close this up now it appears my image is much smaller than what we created so i have to <laughs> zoom in and resize okay so this is much better now this is the interesting part we are going to have our image in here like so but we don't want it extending over the borders of this thing we have created you know what let's name it as frame of this frame we've created so let's grab another two the rectangle to this time around let's leave it as a specific color probably red the color doesn't actually matter but let's leave it as red now um this is changed because uh, i'm still on this layer so you know what let's create a new layer that's a second icon from the right now if you take a look at what i'm doing i'm having this just inside the 
border of the frame we just created so the inner border of the frame the reason for that is the image is going to be inward so once we have that uh, let's bring this in the middle and let's call this uh image goes here <laughs> all right so once we've done that let's right click and turn it into a smart object now make it a smart object because anytime you double click on a smart object it opens a new canvas and whatever changes you make here it will come back over here so if you make a change like probably change the color to i don't know blue uh, close this up and save it it should reflect over here this is what we are looking at so um i actually have an image in here so you know what let's go back to our smart object and i'm going to grab the image give me a second so i'll just click and drag and drop my image in here like so and use this to fill out the space so just repositioning everything the way i want it i think something like this is looking cool and i'll just click on okay up here so if we go ahead and save this this should also show up here like so and this is looking standing already so uh, we already have our frame in there um i think i don't like the canvas size it's a bit too small so let's stretch it out let's stretch it out i think something like this is okay and let's reposition this to here okay so now that we have this what do we do this doesn't look like an actual thing so we are going to make some adjustment to it the first adjustment is going to be on our image so you select the image goes here layer go into fx and click on inner shadow now over here at inner shadow um, you can't actually see let's increase the opacity we'll turn it back down but i just want to show you what is going on now you notice that the blend mode is set to multiply and the color is black that is just fine now if you go ahead and pull this to the left and to the right you notice that we have a dark image showing over our actual image this is something we want so i'll just click and drag it ever so slightly like so just beneath or just within the inner borders of our frame and that is okay now I'll go ahead and reduce the opacity to whatever you feel comfortable with i'll go with about 50 uh, percent probably 40 then go ahead and play with the size as well this makes it look as if um, there's a light hitting it from some direction and i'll click on okay now i should have probably mentioned it i'm going to have my lights coming in from here so if i create i'm going to have my light coming in from this direction so <laughs> sorry for my bad drawing i'm going to have the light coming in from this direction so everything over here is going to be uh, darkened up darkened up in the sense that this part is going to be shadow so the light is coming from here and shadow is going to be on this side uh, that is how i want to have mine that is why the shadow is coming in over at this particular corner because if the light is from here then this part should be darkened and this part will be brightened up that is the whole idea let's go ahead and delete that it's actually just for <laughs> demonstration purposes so let's create our light we want some light coming in from that direction so i'll grab the uh, polygonal lasso tool and i'll create something like this now i have it at the first corners so something like this right angled over here and the light is going to be hitting it from that particular area now uh, for light let's set it to white for the far <laughs> let's set it to white for the foreground color and right on top of our image go into the adjustment panel and click on gradient now you notice we already have a gradient over here like so but we don't want the light coming from the bottom we want it coming from this direction so we go ahead and change the angle now if we change that you notice oh that's unfortunate it's now coming from here so let's go ahead and manipulate the angle to somewhere like so and have it in like this and i think this is this is looking much 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 better so i think in my case is negative um, 45 somewhere around those 
areas is where my light is going to be hitting from now you notice because we created a perfect line this is what we have but i don't want that so what i'll do is i'll just pull it over here like so whilst trying to uh, take that portion out now if i bring it here if i click and drag i'm clicking and dragging you notice that we have a light coming in like so and this is much better and i'll just click on okay so we have our lights coming in here let's let's call that light now we have to create a shadow as well now the shadow is going to be falling over at these areas so again with our polygonal lasso tool we use that because it helps us create uh, straight lines so i click once click over here click over here you can also hold down the shift key so that i have a perfect 45 degree angle and a horizontal angle and a perfect so once you are done once you have your um, selection just double click and it's going to create a beautiful selection for you so this is where our shadow is going to be falling in so for shadows we are going to be using a darker image so i'll have to change the foreground color to black now i'll create i'll go again into the adjustment panel click on gradient now again we don't want our shadow coming in from the bottom so i'll go ahead and play around the angle this time around it's not supposed to be coming in from here so something like this actually it's supposed to be coming in from here <laughs> pardon me for that so i think i'll pull it somewhere here and and i'll click on ok just for this time being now we don't want the shadow to be on top of the image obviously let's call this shadow so what we do is we bring the shadow beneath our image and beneath our frame as well so this is what we have i think this is looking cool actually made a mistake here the shadow is actually supposed to fall something like this so uh, when you are correcting yours make sure you do that now because you are working with um, layer max it's always easy you can just go back to the layer max and just correct that so i'll go back to the layer mask now i have my selection and i'll just paint that portion that i made a mistake so you just brush it over with a white color okay in this case you are using a black color so black or white one of them should work one is revealing and one is actually showing it so this is what i was supposed to do initially pardon me for that so this is what we have and i'll just click and drag now you notice i went back to the gradient i'm not using the layer max anymore i went back to the gradient and double click on it and now i can play around the shadow again so something like this is just fine again i can have it at negative 45 just to match my light like so so uh if you have this obviously you can't use this so you have to reduce your opacity to probably um 20 percent or probably 10 yeah i think 10 percent is looking much nicer now for shadows unlike light we have to blur them out unfortunately because we don't want to have these straight lines showing like that it makes it um well it depends on what you are using it for you can make it this but i personally don't like it like this so i'll create um, some form of blur on top of so i'll go into filter i'll go into blur and i'll just go into gaussian blur just convert to smart object then i'll just have in a blur about 10 20 depending on how big your image is you may have to control or adjust it accordingly so i'll probably go with 20 and have it in like so so i prefer this as compared to that and i'm sure you are seeing the difference as well so if you take a look at this we are already getting something interesting if i go ahead and turn all of these off you notice this is how it's like if i bring in the light this is what we have so since our light source is coming in from this direction um and also our shadow is going to be created somewhere around here which we've already done that now there is one more thing we have to do and that is if you take a look at let me change the color to blue if the light is hitting it from this direction we should have some form of rim light somewhere around here as well to make it look a bit realistic and that is what we are going to create now so let me go ahead and delete that and we'll go back into um, the image itself we already have an inner shadow in there and that was with black we are going to create another inner shadow so go into fx 
click on inner shadow again now if you are using a newer version of photoshop oh congratulations um with that you have the option to add in more inner shadow if you don't have the newer version of photoshop you just have to create a duplicate of this using ctrl j then you apply what we are coming to do right now so since we already have the newer version of photoshop i'll just double click again and add in another inner shadow so just click on the plus icon now we'll be working with the second one the second one we are going to set the color to normal uh, sorry the blend mode to normal and the color to white for uh, white <laughs> for light okay now you can see from our preview here that the light source is coming from this direction this is not what we want so i'll quickly turn off use global light like so so that now we can change it to whatever light we want so if i have it i can have it coming in from this direction like so this is the rim light i'm talking about so place it somewhere around here and i think this is much much better so i'll just turn down the opacity to again about 40 percent like what we had initially and just hide it behind our image like so you can also go ahead and control the distance and the size as well depending on how you want to have yours in there so uh, let's click on ok and see what we have so this is how to create a frame a custom frame in adobe photoshop so this is how the raw image looks like and this is how it looks when we add in everything else i believe this is a much better way to present your work to your client rather than just having a blob image like so anyway thank you guys for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you like to watch more of our videos hit that subscribe button and as always don't forget to share with your family and friends this is theo from Final concept and i'll talk to you guys in the next one